New Gulf Super Unleaded, the gas with guts. Channel 12, your station for news. This is Channel 12 News, the 6 o'clock report with Eleanor Shano White. Good evening, everyone. An emotional reunion took place in South Florida today. Jane Doe, a young woman with amnesia, finally was reunited with her family. South County correspondent Patty Odes reports from the South Florida State Hospital in Pembroke Pines. I'd like to think about it. I, I, I'm glad they told me what they did, and I just kind of use it as a, a storing place in my mind. It was the day Jane Doe has both feared and looked forward to, the meeting with a family she can't remember. That family is the Tomasek family, who arrived last night from Roselle, Illinois. At a press conference after today's emotional reunion, Irene Tomasek told reporters Jane is indeed her 34-year-old daughter, Cheryl, whom she hasn't seen for seven years. Jane, however, says she's still not convinced she's really Cheryl Tomasek and asked reporters to continue calling her Jane, the name familiar to her. Well, because I've been attached to the name so long and I can identify with it and I wouldn't want to have to change course and change names until they're absolutely sure. So I feel confident and I feel nice about the name Jane. I'm very happy. I assured her how much we loved her and was glad to see her. We discovered, discussed many things about the dogs that she used to have when she was a little girl. The family was nervous, very nervous. Uh, Jane was absolutely 100% cool, very relaxed. And uh, I was expecting, you know, to be a little, it would be a little colder, but it turned out just absolutely beautiful. Uh, very warm. While the Tomaseks, police, and doctors are certain Jane is really Cheryl Tomasek, hospital spokeswoman Jackie Dale says she's still not totally convinced. I still have some reservations, and I'm going to wait. I really don't have a, a strong opinion or a feeling right now. Many things indicate that she, in fact, is the Tomaseks' daughter. But I would like to see Jane say so herself. Hospital officials were concerned today's press conference, as well as the meeting with the Tomaseks, would upset Jane. Indeed, several members of the Tomasek family were too emotionally shaken to meet with the press. But Jane's psychiatrist says she's holding up remarkably well. I think today's meeting went absolutely magnificently. Uh, it really couldn't have gone any better. For the Tomasek family, the search for their missing daughter Cheryl has ended. For Jane, however, the search for her true identity continues. Today's meeting didn't help her remember her past life or the events that caused her to lose her memory. And she has yet to meet with Charles Green, who also says Jane is Cheryl Tomasek, his girlfriend, missing from their Hollywood, Florida home since last summer. Jane spent the day resting here at the South Florida State Hospital. She'll remain here until doctors judge her able to go out on her own. For now, both Jane and what appears to be her newly found family will take each day step by step. From the South Florida State Hospital at Pembroke Pines, Patty Odes, 12 News. The sensational two-week libel trial against the National Enquirer ended today with a victory for Hollywood celebrity Carol Burnett. An 11-member jury found that the Enquirer was indeed slandered Miss Burnett when it ran an article saying she was loud and boisterous at a restaurant meeting with then-Secretary of State Henry Kissinger. The jury awarded Burnett $1.6 million in damages. Spokesmen at the Lantana-based publication say they believe the decision is erroneous and unfair and they plan to appeal. Meanwhile, observers feel today's ruling will lead to a flood of lawsuits against the Enquirer by other public figures. Agents for the state attorney's office began making arrests today in what officials are calling a countywide crackdown on adult bookstores. Stephanie Stahl reports investigators began the roundup early this morning. The arrests will continue through the night and be completed by Friday. They are the first arrest for pornography violations in the county since 1977. Most of the dealers were presented with misdemeanor charges today and given court dates. Seven others were charged at the county jail and released. Three reportedly were women. Twenty-three adult bookstore dealers are the target of the grand jury indictments that involve the county's nine X-rated stores. The assistant state attorney is concerned, however, that many of the dealers left town when word of the impending arrests leaked. Others are believed to be hiding. Both felony and misdemeanor indictments were returned by the grand jury Tuesday. The felony charges stem from selling pornography to a 16-year-old boy. David Bloodworth, the state attorney, will hold a press conference in the morning when more details of the pornography crackdown will be revealed. Stephanie Stahl, 12 News, 
Palm Beach County. A family of seven is homeless tonight after an early morning fire destroyed a home in Westgate. Investigators say an electrical malfunction triggered the blaze on Genesee Avenue. One child and an adult received minor injuries. Firemen say the family lost all its belongings. The Red Cross has been contacted and is awaiting word from the family before lending assistance. And the search for 24-year-old Sandra Barr was called off by the Coast Guard this morning. The Palm Beach resident was swept off a disabled sailboat near the Bahamas on Sunday. Five other persons were rescued. The craft got into trouble during a violent thunderstorm which produced 15-foot waves. The Coast Guard searched more than a 2,000 square mile area for three days, but to no avail. Well, still to come, FPNL has had a rate hike approved by the Public Service Commission. That story next. Crime is increasing. Where will it stop? Stop crime at your door or window with Rollup, the real protector. Call Rollup now for fast installation and substantial savings during Rollup's crime prevention sale. Enjoy solid security against intruders with Rollup, the real protector. Call Rollup now for a free estimate. You'll find Rollup under W in the white pages. Jerry, remember Berkeley, 68, long hair. <laughs> Still driving a Volkswagen bus, eh? Save old crazy Jerry. Far out, it's not the same old bus. The Volkswagen Vanagon. Vanagon, really? Neat, all that room, doors and windows for days. Jerry, you have really got it made. Jerry, it is you. Volkswagen does it again. Remember your bouffant hairdo and all that stiff hairspray? Well, hairstyles changed a lot. Now hairsprays did too, like the soft hairspray called Rave. Look, spray Rave on one side, a stiff holding spray on the other. This spray dries so stiff the comb can barely get through. But you can comb through Rave without combing out the hold. Try Rave soft hairspray. The flexible hold you can comb through. Don't you sit there. Come on and play. <laughs> there are millions of prizes to win in McDonald's $10 million Build-A-Big Mac game. Wow. Ranging from Coca-Cola to a Big Mac sandwich. Mm. Even win $100,000. Holy cow. McDonald's biggest game ever. But you can't win if you don't play. Well, don't just sit there. Let's go build a Big Mac and start building our fortune today. Florida Power and Light has received the okay to raise the fuel adjustment charge on customers' monthly bills. Dave Wirth reports this means a hike of 37% for the average user. The fuel adjustment starting in May will be $26.73 for 1,000 kilowatt hours. Now, the 1,000 kilowatt hours is what the, average, what the customer uses on an average basis over a year. The charge was raised earlier this month by $6 to $19.50, and now it will be boosted another $7 in May. That will put the average monthly bill at just over $64. I'm worried about the older people and with their fixed incomes, and they may not be able to handle this new rise in cost of everything. Not too happy about it. Uh, pretty high right now. I just, I think it's, uh, this past year, I think I paid twice as much as I've been used to paying. Two years ago in May, the average fuel adjustment charge was $2.79. In May of last year, that jumped to $14.75. This year, that figure becomes $26.73, all because of the rising cost of oil. My bill this month was $48.44. My fuel adjustment charge was $16.59. Now, if my usage remains the same for the month of May, my fuel adjustment charge will increase by $3.05. And my bill is below normal. The average customer will pay $7.23 more in May. Dave Worth, 12 News at Florida Power and Light in West Palm Beach. The government announced today it will try to deport nearly 5,000 Haitians who have arrived in the United States since last October. This follows a recent ruling in Miami that allows for the deportation of illegal Haitians. The Immigration Service began arresting thousands of other immigrants in January, so the Haitians are only part of the new crackdown. Haitians who arrived in this country before last October will not be affected according to the law. 
The League of Women Voters received a lesson in the criminal justice system today. That lesson came from Palm Beach County Circuit Judge Rosemary Barquette, who spoke before the League's luncheon meeting. Judge Barquette suggested a manner in which convicted criminals can repay society. In those areas where it's possible, I think that we should have uh, defendants put on probation and as a condition of probation make them do things like uh, building partitions at the stockades, which I've done clean up the beaches, uh, anything along, along those lines, make them give back something to the uh, restitution of the victim, but additionally pay something back to society. Judge Barquette admitted the judicial system is not working and added the public should be educated to the inner workings of the system. A new mayor sits atop the city government of West Palm Beach tonight. Stan Zimmerman reports Mike Hyman replaces James Adams as mayor, but not without some bitterness. The West Palm Beach City Commission voted unanimously for two-term incumbent Mike Hyman to take the mayor's chair. Hyman is a 36-year-old developer who won his second term earlier this month. He says he has several priorities for his administration. The, uh, the tying down of, of the site for the housing for low and moderate income families uh, that's been bandied around for you know, two and a half, three years now. Um, the, the solution of the Evergreen Cemetery problem uh, and cleaning that area up is a very doable pro problem that can be solved at, at this point. Hyman becomes the 60th mayor of West Palm Beach, an honor which three-term city commissioner Eva Mack believes should have gone to her. Any other reason for it? Are you disappointed? Yes, very much so. Is there anything you can do besides wait an additional year? There's nothing since it takes three, a majority of three. Um, there's nothing I can do unless I try to push for an orderly, for an orderly rotation of the office of mayor. Mac declined the nomination for vice mayor. Stan Zimmerman, 12 News, the West Palm Beach City Hall. Palm Beach County Commission, sitting today as the county zoning board, approved a controversial request for a dock on the Loxahatchee River. Now, critics charged a development called Eagle's Nest illegally built a 100-foot dock on the river and then asked for permission. But an attorney for the developer assured the commission all necessary permits had already been obtained and further that the commission approval was not absolutely necessary anyway. Well, the motion for the special exemption passed four to nothing. Word from the Cape says the shuttle may take off a day early. We'll have that story right after this. It's like digging for gold. It's striking it rich. It's the gold tag sale at your Suncoast Oldsmobile dealers. Cutlass Supremes, Omegas, 88s, 98s, all at gold tag sale prices. Choose gas or diesel. Choose four-cylinder V6 or the economical V8. Each one a money saver. The gold rush is on. Cash in on the Oldsmobile excitement happening right now and save big only at your Suncoast Oldsmobile dealers. I'm used to getting what I want, especially from my Allen Bush broker. I'm getting the most professional and personalized service I've ever had, and I appreciate the reduced commissions. What a savings. It takes action to get what you want today. All it takes is a step in the right direction. Good work, Allen Bush. Call Allen Bush and receive your reduced commission schedule brochure. Customer securities protected to one half million by SIPC. It's happening now through Monday. Levitt's greatest living room sale. Sofas, love seats, chairs, recliners, sectionals. Every living room piece in stock, excluding lamps and tables, reduced a big 20% off Levitt's already low, low prices. Pick from a huge selection of styles, colors, and fabrics. Famous names like Grailer, Bassett, Futorian, Roe, International, and many, many more. 20% off a big selection, big savings. At Levitt's. Martha, money's coming out of this dishwasher. Of course, it's General Electric factory rebate time. But now you get big rebates direct from GE when you buy that dishwasher, this range, this refrigerator. How do they do that? Easy, just go to your GE appliance dealer. I just shook hands with the microwave. GE, we bring good things to life. Acme Appliance, 2315 North Dixie Highway, all Goodyear service stores. 
There's still no firm date on the launch of the space shuttle, but the last big test on the rocket will be held tomorrow when more refueling is scheduled. Today, engineers removed hydrogen from the external fuel tank. Initial inspection shows no problems with repaired insulation on the tank. The launch has now been tentatively set for April 9th, but a definite date won't be established until next week. However, we have established a definite date with Patty Sherman, who is here right now to tell us about hopefully a nice weekend weather forecast. I can give you a definite date for the sun to okay, return. Good. Today's the 26th, mm -hmm. the 27th. Great. And it's not so bad, that considering the weather that's out in the western United States, we can take a few clouds and showers. It's snowing in the west. Right now, with our reading of 71 degrees, it's hard to believe winter is still continuing in the nation. Humidity, 46 percent. East-southeasterly winds at 15 miles an hour. Barometric pressure is very high, 30.25 and holding steady. And the surf temperature is 65. Our low last night was 64. High temperature today, a little bit warmer than yesterday at 76. No rainfall, and the air quality was 48 in the good range. Now you're going to see a lot of clouds associated with a low pressure system over the western United States. And those clouds represent a snowstorm over many of the mountains in the western states. You can see a complex frontal system pushing into the east. Now in the Great Lakes it was causing mainly some light scattered rain, but snow up in northern Michigan and also in portions of Minnesota this morning. And you can see this whole thing is starting to push eastward. Southern United States, nice and sunny, except for here in South Florida. You can see the cloudiness that built early in the morning and stayed with us for most of the day. Now, this storm system is potentially dangerous. The low is centered over eastern Idaho. It left three to four inches of rain in the northern valleys of California, as much as two feet of snow already in the Sierra Nevada mountains, and it's expected to bring a foot of snow in the Colorado Rockies. There's light scattered rain over southern California right now and snow starting in southern Idaho and northern Utah. This system is going to push eastward through the weekend and bring some snow into the Midwestern United States this weekend. Meanwhile, right now, there's a band of rain over northern northern Illinois, Indiana, northern Ohio, and also portions of western New York State. This morning there were about four inches of snow up in Duluth, Minnesota. Temperatures dipped into the 20s there. And some teens in the eastern United States, 17 in Atlantic City, New Jersey, set a record low. And it was 12 degrees up in Holton, Maine. That was the nation's low. But temperatures in the afternoon climbed. They were fairly warm. And now we'll take a look at them. Believe it or not, it was sunny everywhere in Florida except along the southeast coast. There was an upper trough of low pressure moving across the state, and the clouds and showers were confined to the south. Not very heavy rain, about a half an inch reported in Miami, and light scattered showers still reported over central Dade County southward. Temperatures were very mild around the state today, and it's going to be warm and sunny here too tomorrow. Right now outside, we're not showing any rain on our radar. Most of it is to the south of us. And so as we look to tonight's forecast, the showers, the light scattered showers that have been around the area will be ending. It'll be becoming partly cloudy later this evening. Easterly winds at about 10 miles an hour or less. Lows tonight, mid-60s along the coast, inland in the 50s. And tomorrow, sunshine will return with those partly cloudy conditions and mild temperatures. Easterly winds at 15 miles an hour. The highs will be in the upper 70s. For boaters, small craft are advised to exercise caution for tonight. Easterly winds 15 to 20 knots. Seas 4 to 6 feet. They'll be coming down tomorrow. Inland coastal waters, tropic condition. High tide shortly after midnight tonight, low tide at 6.40 tomorrow morning, sunset at 6.35 tonight, and sunrise at 6.17 tomorrow morning. Saturday through Monday, we expect a pretty nice weekend. Temperatures will be reaching their normal levels. It'll be sunny. We won't have very high winds. Lows will be in the 60s and highs in the low 80s. We're starting to increase our afternoon highs. It should be getting into the mid-80s by the end of the month, beginning of April. Okay. Can't think of anything nicer than a sunny Friday. No. Thanks, Patty. Dodgers breezed into town today. We'll have an interview with Mr. Hollywood. Jim Gallagher is next.
There's just a little time left for you to compare Toyota and receive this free gas cost calculator and gas mileage comparator. With gas prices costing you more, you need Toyota to save you more. And your Toyota dealer has a great selection of gas-saving Toyotas at money-saving prices. Sporty Celica Supras to tough Toyota trucks. But March 31st is the last day you can get our free calculator comparator. So while the invitation is still out, see your Toyota dealer now. When you compare Toyota, you'll buy Toyota. First Federal of Del Rey presents a bright new way to earn money on your checking. The Star Account, earning the highest interest allowable by law. And now, a shining offer from First Federal of Del Rey. Open your Star Account with $300 or more and receive free 200 Star Blue imprinted checks. Yes, your future will be brighter at First Federal of Del Rey, serving Palm Beach and Broward counties for more than 30 years. All across America, cities and states are lighting streets better and for fewer watts. Thanks to these high-pressure sodium lights, they can give over twice as much light for the same energy as older mercury lights and up to six times incandescence. Government officials at all levels are working to keep your streets brighter and safer for fewer watts than ever before. They're working hard to put America in a new light today and save energy for America tomorrow. Sodium lights save your community money and America energy. Hello? Hi, guess what? I was just going to call you. I have a new office, and they're installing my new Palm Beach verticals right now. Well, well I just... Well, they're manufactured right here in the Palm Beaches, and they have heat-sealed bottoms. Yeah, and I had over 100 colors to choose I know. from. And uh, knowing my boss, you know they had the lowest price. I know. Well, see you later. I'm glad to see your boss is as smart as I am. <laughs> <laughs> the Palm Beacher. It's the smart buy. And from the sports desk that brought you Charlie Hustle last night, <laughs> tonight we get Mr. Hollywood. That's right, who's from North Tampa and went to Michigan State, as a matter of fact, Steve Garvey. The Los Angeles Dodgers were in West Palm Beach today to play the Braves in a spring exhibition game. The Dodgers and the Astros finished in a tie for first in the National League's Western Division last season. The Astros won that playoff and met the Phillies in the playoff to go to the series. Today I talked with Dodger great Steve Garvey and asked if he saw this pennant race being as tight as last season's. I think so. It may even be closer. I think Atlanta, uh, with a young team, is going to use that experience and it's going to make them better. They've added a couple of veterans that could help them immeasurably. I think that Houston, Cincinnati, Atlanta, and Los Angeles will bat it all out, and San Francisco and San Diego are going to have something to say about it. So I think if we just stay healthy and get some of our injured people back into form, I think we're going to be the ones that people are going to always keep an eye on. I read somewhere that you might be interested in politics. Well, people keep telling me that. I, <laughs> I'm wondering if this wasn't a plan by the young Republicans or Democrats or something. Uh, once it was brought up to me a couple of years ago, I had never thought of it until then. I've thought about it since then. And it might be a viable career for me after baseball. Public service is appealing because it's working with people again. That was Steve Garvey of the Los Angeles Dodgers. Today, the Dodgers defeated the Atlanta Braves by a score of 7 to nothing. Texas whipped the Montreal Expos by a score of 4 to nothing. It was the Minnesota Twins defeating the Cincinnati Reds 7 to 3, and the Cardinals got by the Mets 3 to 1. The Pirates whipped Toronto 5 to 1 over in the West Coast, and the Chicago White Sox over the Boston Red Sox by a 6 to 5 score. Today in the Heritage Golf Classic at Hilton Head Island, South Carolina, Hale Irwin, two-time champion, rallied down the stretch with three birdies to tie Seve Ballesteros. Irwin, who had trouble in the early rounds, ended the day with a 68 and is sharing the lead. Behind the co-leaders right now, Don January, Jerry Pate, and Morris Hatalski. Tulsa won the National Invitational Basketball Championship last night as they beat Syracuse in overtime. And it was a barn burner at New York's Madison Square Garden. Syracuse in the white taking the lead with uh, five minutes gone in the second half, three on two break, and Sanover stuffed the ball right there, threw the net, put the Orangemen ahead 56-54. And he led the scoring with 29 points. Tony Bruins three-point play here gave Syracuse a seven-point lead a little bit later. Bruin, by the way, had 25 points before fouling out. Mike Anderson brought Tulsa back, and he hit the first six shots of the second half, 82-78 right here. Now the clock just down to 17. Gene Waldron drives the length of the court to make it 82-80, to and Sanford put in a shot just as the buzzer sounded to tie the game at 82 all. So there you go. They're in a tie. They're in overtime. Each team gets two free throws in the overtime period. Greg Stewart got a basket with just 30 seconds left to give Tulsa the lead 86 to 
84. Stewart had 23 points, was named the MVP. Syracuse missed that shot as time runs out, and so Tulsa wins it by a score of 86 to 84. Jubilation in the garden. No jubilation for Hubie Brown. The Atlanta Hawks fired their head coach today. His Hawks won the Central Division title in the 79-80 season, but they slipped at 26 and a half games back this year. So the board of directors met in West Palm today and announced that decision. And from Tallahassee today, after a two-week investigation, the state attorney has decided to file formal felony charges against six FSU football players and a former teammate in connection with merchandise stolen from a local department store. That's it for sports. Not a happy story for you to report, I'm sure, Jim. True. When we return, we're going to take a look at some shockingly realistic sculptures by Dwayne Hansen. So please stay with us. What a relief to know the fizz is in the house. What a relief to know the fizz is in the house. When your stomach and your head make you want to stay in bed and you haven't got the comfort of a spouse. Alka-Seltzer. For acid indigestion and headache, nothing works better. Nothing is more soothing. No wonder it's America's home remedy. And your boyfriend has turned out to be something of a louse. What do we need to know the fizz is in the house? When you feed your lawn Turf Builder Fertilizer from Scott's, you can rest easy. Because you can depend on Scott's for a deep green that lasts for weeks. And weeks. And weeks. And weeks. Turf Builder is specially developed for lawns like yours. So you can depend on our green for up to eight weeks. Come on, Walter. You've been asleep for eight mm -hmm. weeks. Just five more minutes. A lot of stores advertise fighting inflation, but they're really selling weekly specials. Pantry Pride gives you everyday low prices every day. There's a difference. Penny Pincher prices stay low every day. After their ad, the other store's special isn't special anymore. Penny Pincher prices save you a lot more on your total food bill than a few weekly specials. It's the total food bill that counts. Look what's happened to the TV Post. Primetime comes alive in this new special insert in the Sunday Post. Scan the new Primetime box and see every program on every channel, including the pay TV channels. You'll find movie reviews, sports details, right on the same page. The TV Post is all the guide you need, and it's free with your Sunday Post. Subscribe now. A truly dramatic collection of new works by the eminent sculptor Duane Hansen was previewed today at the Norton Gallery of Art, where the Florida artist met with reporters and critics to talk about the stunningly realistic life-size people he creates. They do have life of their own. They have st many stories. People come with stories and uh, uh, tell me about what happened to uh, in the museum, for example, about this one and that one, and um, it's a whole sort of a uh, history or, or personal identification with each piece, so it has really a life of its own when it gets out of my hands. The only problem here at the Norton Gallery is trying to decide what's real and, and what isn't. You really have to see these figures to believe them. No, these are not real people. But you don't have to take my word for it. You can find out for yourself when this show opens on March 29th. It's the early edition of 12 News. John Matthews will be here tonight at 11. ABC World News Tonight is next with more details on Carol Burnett's victory over the National Enquirer. I'm Eleanor Shano White. Thank you for joining us and have a nice evening, everyone. Next time you're hot to trot, horse around at Pompano Harness. Post time, 7.30. At Pompano! We're always hot to trot. Lots of folks are into fitness nowadays. Fitness that includes a healthy, nutritious diet. When you talk about nutrition, right here is the natural place to start. Dairy farmers provide an important part of a well-balanced diet and at a price you can afford. It's fresh, delicious milk. Florida's fitness food. The milk we produce is taken every day to modern dairy facilities where it's tested for content and quality 
under the most rigid standards of excellence. Then all this milk is sealed up.